you're sitting in the blind ends game day. S six points. Hopefully you feel goal to follow. INT pick six, baby. Yeah. Go Wisconsin. <laughs> channel everybody we are in my blind down by the barn because I've been spotting a buck down here on trail camera and in life when I come home from work he's standing out here and one day when the wife was burning leaves he come running out of the woods above the house and by the cornfield and came running down the driveway and came down here by the barn again so he's pretty consistent so we are trying to head him off but either way in this next video you are going to see the reason why why we have a hmm, a backup bow so even though I'm gun hunting I'm doing the uh, intro now because I want to get this video out and uh, there's been a wrench thrown in our gun season 2 which will be explained in the next video but uh, this is the reason why I have a backup bow and <laughs> what happens is something that does never does happen but is a good explanation as why you should always shoot with uh, with your hunting clothes on and when you get a new heavyweight jacket for late season, um, you should shoot before it and pay attention to be very careful. So don't call me a dumb blank. It's something that just happened, but luckily I have a backup bow. So late season bow hunting is still on track. Um, unless I get my other bow back so and that's just a hint so hope you enjoy the video um, it happens you don't plan on it but it can okay just a little tip you guys want to make sure your sights are on so when you before you go out hunting or when you get back from hunting um, I got my target set up here. Don't worry about all the blue tarps, it's covering our wood. But I got my target set up and uh, got my 20 yard marker right here. So I'm just gonna take a shot from 20 yards, make sure my sights are still on. So let's uh, put an arrow on the string and I'm gonna also use a broadhead because that's what I'm shooting right now <laughs> because it's hunting season. But, uh, and I got a wind today, um, blowing pretty good <laughs> at 15 to 20 miles per hour. And walking back from my stand on the highway, I seen a guy drive by with a big buck on the back of his car, which makes you envy them a little bit because you're wondering what you're doing wrong. But not doing anything wrong, it's just the weather and the location. So, all right, let's uh, throw an arrow on here and Make sure it's still on. Okay, and another thing I might add, since I got my tech cam turned on, uh, you're in your hunting clothes, so you want to make sure that you're shooting good with your hunting clothes on. So let's uh, get ready and send an arrow down the range.
Whoa! Okay, well, <clears throat> excuse me. You've seen, you've seen what happened um, when I shot my practice shot and the arrow fell off the string and I blew up my Matthews. It just blew the string off it, so it's okay. But this is the reason why, boy, in a video like a month or so ago, where I show the three bulls I'm shooting, um, I could just grab my crossbow and continue hunting, but I'm grabbing my um, diamond outlaw and I'm just taking a few shots of that, make sure it's still on. Got the tactic cams mounted on it and uh, we're just taking some practice shots. So let's take a couple shots and see where she hits. Okay, here we go, the old outlaw. I got them out on top, one on the stabilizer, single cam bow, um, using the same arrows as I did with my Matthews and uh, my Muzzy Quiver, which I really like. Got a trophy ridge rack sight on here. So I'm gonna give this a couple shots, one with a field tip, one with a broadhead, and I'm gonna turn my tact cams on again too, just in case. It blows up in my face so let's uh let's get shooting okay we're gonna take a field tip this bull might be because i'm missing some felt on the wrist um it is a drop away um what i got on here i do have the qad ultra rest on here but uh it's missing some felt which might lower the arrow just a tick but it might be okay just to get us through the rest of this hunting season so make sure the arrow's on the string good so it doesn't fall off and but this uh <laughs> this bow has been actually dry fired a couple times three times not by me but by somebody else but let's take a couple shots one with a field tip one with a broadhead and let's see where she hits That's a dead deer right behind the shoulder. Okay, now using my muzzy troll car three blade. Um, on a bloody arrow from that doe. So, <laughs> this should work. I should have showed you guys before where I shot this into the target um, just to clean it off. But, Okay, this will tell me if the bow is in tune or out of tune. If the arrow hits in the same location as the field tip, then we should be okay. But that's uh, we're at 20 yards. Let's give this a shot. Okay, that one was a little low. Um, I'm going to shoot it again just to see what it does. Okay, I'm going to shoot the broadhead first. This time what's funny is the, uh, I don't know if you can see that, it's still kind of glowing red. I don't know if I ever shut it off, but let's uh, put this in there. Raise up that rest. If it is a little low, then it is that felt that's missing on the rest, which I can look around if I have any and bump that up just a little bit more. But let's uh, take this for another shot. Okay, that one was perfect. Let me take a field tip.
and that one was good too. So let's walk up there and uh, I'll show you what they did. Okay, bull might be just a tick out of tune, but the broadhead's on the right, field tip's on the left. Uh, both of them are dead deer. So, um, boy, I'm thinking that felt is just taking the rest off just a little bit. But uh, let's do a 30 yard shot with the broadhead and see where we're at. Okay, we are walking back. I have, as you can see this, I have pegs marking off my range. Uh, and 40 is over there, and then that towel pole is actually 50. So, but let's take the broadhead at 30. Um, it is pretty windy right now. I'm getting kind of swirling winds coming through the target range here, so that could have a little bit to do with it too, especially at longer ranges. But let's uh, take this broadhead and see what it does at 30 yards. As long as it's in the kill zone, that's all I care about right now. We're getting towards the end of the season. I'm not gonna be able to get out and hunt tonight, but maybe tomorrow morning and hopefully tomorrow afternoon. And then possibly on Friday, the day before gun season. So let's uh, take this at 30. The wind's kind of backed off a little bit. So it's a wrap. Okay, that's a little bit low, so I'm gonna make a little adjustment and see if we can take care of that. Okay, I made a little adjustment and after thinking about it, I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have taken more than one shot at 30 to see <laughs> where the side's at, but made a little adjustment. We'll take a shot if it's in the kill zone. That's all that counts, and I'll keep it live after the shot to walk you up to the target. So well, live, recorded live. But let's take another shot here. Yeah, it's pretty close with the uh, broadhead. I'm gonna shoot the field tip. Let's see where that shoots. Problem is, my eyes aren't the best anymore, so I have kind of a hard time seeing the 30 yard pin. It's blurring with the rest. Okay, the field tip was really good, so let's uh, take a walk up there. Might do one more shot. We'll see. <coughs> yeah, I think that rest is off just a little bit. So, top of the target and bottom of the target. I'm going to make a little adjustment go in between. <coughs> okay, I made another adjustment. And uh, it's a little bit to the right with the, with the uh, broadhead, but my pin moved to the right, but it's still, that's in the kill zone. That top arrow, I got to take the car out because I can't get it out because it welded itself in the target. But I'm gonna call that good. We're good 20, 30 yards. And with the react sight, um, I can probably take it out to 40, 50, and 60. We'll leave it as is right now just to finish out the season and we'll fine tune it later. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, just shows if you can afford it, 
or if you have an older bow, set it up and practice shooting it because you never know when you're going to need a backup. Um, just happened that my car was sticking up and when I came to full draw the arrow rested right here and so when I was at full draw it still felt like the arrow was perfectly straight um, and uh, until I pulled the trigger. <laughs> My $1,200 bow, not counting the accessories, kind of uh, blew up in my face. But anyway, the bow is going to be fine. Um, I just decided since it's still the original strings, I'm getting custom strings and cables put on it at La Crosse Archery in Alaska. And uh, very good shop if you ever need strings. Uh, Schmidt's bow strings is out of that, is out of that shop, and uh, he does a really, really good job on high end strings. So, we're gonna put a couple hundred dollars into the bow and get it back on track because I love that bow and I love the feel of it. I see no reason of buying another one, so I may as well upgrade the one I have since the string blew off. <laughs> but, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit that like button subscribe and share with your friends as to why you need to have a backup bow or at least a crossbow or something in that order so but we're running into the last couple hours of daylight and I only have one more day of gun season left so like I said it's getting cut short and I'll explain that on the next video hopefully we'll have a deer down so all right like and subscribe we'll see you on the next one